Okay, this is part two then of this study. And uh, it is a study that I've entitled JWs and the Trinity, along with my own commentary. Right now we're making a commentary, really, on Paul. We believe in his teachings that they're scriptural in Philippians 3, 9 through 13, 14. This is Paul's desire, and I'm echoing it as my own, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of the Messiah, the righteousness which is of Yahweh by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead." not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of. Messiah Yahushua, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Yahweh, and the master Yahushua. Now those words meant something to me as a practicing lordship Christian. Today as a believer they mean even more. So I'm glad to be out of my own particular brand of Jehovism. Again, I am not a JW, nor have I ever been one. I'm glad to find a King James Version which loves Yahweh enough to let him back in where he belongs. It's not perfect. I have some work to do on it. The Spirit needs to lead and guide me to discern the truth of it. Also, I have no objection to studying with anyone whose only agenda is an honest-hearted study of Scripture and examining it from all sides. Such people are extremely hard to find, especially those willing to set aside their indoctrination and examine the Word with only the set-apart, dedicated spirit of truth in charge, yet it remains my number one heart's desire. Now, returning, Jehovah's Witnesses' objections to the Trinity based on the Watchtower publication, SYBT, which means to say this Trinitarian's reaction to it is based on that, and other standard arguments used by JWs. Objection number one. This is a firm objection. The word Trinity, the SYBT says that the word Trinity is not in the Bible, and they are absolutely right. I'm speaking here. A man who himself was misdirected asked me to set aside such precepts back in April of 1971. He told me words like Trinity and Rapture could not be found in Scripture. I myself was so misled I set out to prove him wrong. Of course they are, I retorted. See, I was a church guy at the time. I had uh, on my belonging a Strong's exhaustive concordance. I hunted high and low to no avail to disprove this man, only to come to the conclusion it's not in the scripture. Since the words aren't the terms, a red flag went up. I had been deceived. I only wanted what the Bible clearly taught. After a bit, I saw for myself that that was easier said than done. This would also end up costing me everything. It became clear that that if the words themselves are not scriptural, how on earth could their teachings be. I'm very wary of doctrines which cannot be validated by Scripture to this day. His response, also see the oneness objections. As mentioned above, in point of fact, virtually all anti-Trinitarian groups make this same objection. Well, at least oneness is a scriptural term and a truth, I comment. See, Deuteronomy 6.4 and back studies. 
To assume what is not stated must not be true as an argument from silence. Further to say that the doctrine of the Trinity is not true because the exact word is Trinity is absent from the Bible self-refuting. For if that kind of reasoning were true, it would then follow that Watchtower doctrine could not be true, for in the original Hebrew and Greek text, Watchtower terms like theocracy, which they claim they're under Jehovah. Note, Jehovah is an English transliteration. Originally, Hebrew had no vowels, only consonants, Y-H-W-H. Well, I'm glad that fellow sees that. Not con are not contained in Scripture either. Um, I, I have to disagree with them. They are contained in the original Scripture. It does not follow because a particular word is not contained in Scripture that we cannot use that word to communicate a truth. Curious though, I comment, Watchtower is a scriptural term despite the group attached to it. What is not at all considered is even terms like Bible, a Latin term, or self-existent are not mentioned in scriptures, and both are biblical truths, which all JWs agree upon. If we were only limited to strict biblical words, then we would have to, when teaching out of the New Testament, use only Koine Greeks, words that the New Testament authors utilize. And that's not true because we use the Old Testament. We can employ the Hebrew terms. Employing unbiblical words does not violate the rules of sola scriptura, which says scripture alone is the sole invaluable, infallible reguli fidel rule of faith for the church. As long as the unbiblical words are wholly consistent with scripture, he argues, holding firm to the regular Fide, the early church would use unbiblical words to explain and define the biblical data revealed within the pages of the Holy Writ. My turn. Ha ha, pal. You probably also defend Christmas and Easter, either missing from Scripture or condemned by Scripture. I don't even care for the word Bible anymore. It's too close to Babel, Babylon, Babylon for comfort to suit me. I occasionally use the term Bible out of courtesy or importunity, but I still cringe when doing so. In other words, Trinity is merely a precise doctrinal formula term word, neither found in the Old or New Testament. How odd if true, and it is true, the Bible is absent of such language. In fact, Scripture commands us to use a new language according to many scriptures both in old and new but here's the one that I most recently came across in Zephaniah 3 9 for then I will turn to the people a pure language that they may call upon the name of Yahweh to serve him with one consent that in Hoshea exhorts us to leave behind Baal Baal Lord or the English Lord God and return to him, Yahweh. That defines the biblical revelation. I think these are his words that is so overwhelmingly found in Scripture. God the Father sent God the Son, the eternal word, by which he became flesh. John 1, 1, 6, 37 through 40, 17, 5. After which God the Son died in the place of the believer, whereby his death proves provides full atonement for the sins of the of his people Matthew 121 Romans 8:32 and God the Father and God the Son sent the God the Holy Spirit to empower the church and dwell with believers you know double talker such language is not scriptural and you probably know it granted you can find God the Father in scripture but I have never found any God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. I have found God and the Son and God the Holy Ghost in church jargon and literature a plenty returning to him. When the Helper comes whom I will send you from the Father that is the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father he will testify about me.
John 15, 26. I believe in the spirit of truth and can explain it possibly better than a Trinitarian understands it. I hope to do so shortly, but until then I ask a rhetorical question. Who is the father of Yahushua HaMashiach, Lord Jesus Christ for Christians? Hmm? Again, this point must be understood, returning to him. We cannot confuse biblical data with doctrinal words that merely define the data. The doctrine of the Trinity was derived from the scriptural data. He claims, biblical scholar Benjamin B. Warfield explains the difference. Quote, Precisely what the New Testament is, the documentation of the religion of the incarnate Son, the outpoured Spirit, that is to say of the religion of the Trinity, and what we mean by the doctrine of the Trinity, is nothing but the formulation. Remember that term, especially in context with another, a formula, expressed in the Trinitarians, Matthew 28:19 returning to him. An exact language of the conception of God presupposed in the religion of the incarnate Son and outpoured Spirit. Benjamin B. Warfield, Biblical Doctrines, Carlisle, The Banner of Truth, Trust. So nowadays, I'm even leery of terms like incarnation or substitutionary atonement and such, though I subscribe more to the clear teachings of Scripture and scriptural terms such as propitiation and mercy seat, terms I clearly identify with and understand, until disproven by Scripture, I continue to believe in the concepts behind these particular terms while keeping an open mind to the Spirit. Thus, the triunity of God is based on biblical data, whatever that means. The formulation of doctrinal words, however, came later. Oh, yes, they did. When Christians developed the precise term Trinity, quote, unquote, as we have seen in past studies about the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE, that simply defined the biblical data because of the heresies that deny the biblical data in some way or other. As with doctrinal terms like substitutionary atonement, incarnation, or even the term gospel, all these terms came later after the apostolic age, which the church used to define the revolution or revelation or data that is clearly contained in scripture. As for gospel, I'm leery. What do you mean by the term, and perhaps I'll agree with you, or better yet, do you agree with me regarding the death, burial, and resurrection as defined in 1 Corinthians chapter 15? Back to him. Moreover, salvation is completely dependent on the triunity of God, the soterological trinity. No, it's not. No. It's based on faith in the shed blood of the Lamb of Yahweh, and I can prove that that I even believed in while Christendom, for example, the covenant of redemption. That is, all the Father gives to Christ will come and he will raise him up at the last day. John 6, 37. That Jesus is the mediator between God the Father and man. 1 Timothy 2, 5. can only be true if Jesus is God and is a distinct person from the one he is mediating for. Again, this point must be understood. We cannot confuse the scriptural data of the Trinity with the doctrinal word Trinity that defines the biblical data. Asari, and now Hebrews, disproves you, sir. A high priest is needed, while clearly not a high priest which has infirmities of as other men have, but a high priest who is according to Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 and the King James Version, saying then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens. Objection number two, pagan sources. We will continue on with this study 
by a Trinitarian about JW doctrine in our next session. Thanks.